Keith Nima with Wichita Metro Fools of Oz, also a captain with Wichita Fire Department. Today I'm here with Braden and Hunter with Wichita Fire as well. And we're going to go over the Wichita bundles, how they're set up, kind of what we like them, and how we use them. The Wichita bundles for over 12 years is our primary attack line, uh, both on the inch and three quarter and the two and a half. Uh, we didn't invent anything super special. It's based off of Minuteman load, actually. Uh, a lot of places use bundles. Uh, the only thing we did differently than most places is we put all our indicators, our nozzles, our couplings, and our halfway points all on one end. It's part of our keep it simple philosophy. Everything you need is right there facing the door. Uh, it's dark or you just got out of bed for this fire and your head's not quite clear yet as you're walking up and you drop the bundle. Everything you need to make it a successful stretch is right in front of you. Your nozzle, your two halfway points, and your coupling, depending on whether you're stretching to and stretching from. We'll kind of go over the differences of what those are a little later. The nice thing about running these bundles for the last 12 plus years is we've been able to refine it. Uh, these things get stretched every day here in Wichita working fires and they just work. Uh, the nice thing is it doesn't matter if it's a five-week recruit and training or if it's a seasoned veteran uh, you know stretched on a one and a half the stretch always looks the same and the timing is almost always the same. That's we talk about the fire ground clock coming up and the one minute mark. Our crews are expecting all this to happen in a minute so our truck guys are searching ahead of the line or away from the line. Our truck guys are heading to the roof to make the uh, vent hole they know about what to expect and when that line is going to be stretched and when it'll be in service. It's one of our rigs. Let's take a closer look. Looking left to right on this engine, we have a inch and three quarter attack bed, a two and a half inch attack bed, another inch and three quarter attack bed, and then four inch supply. You'll notice that all the Wichita bundles are sitting on top of what we call St. Paul stacks. Uh, St. Paul stacks, if you're not familiar, uh, get a hold of John Hall uh, from St. Paul. He'll kind of go over these with you, but they have uh, really helped us on long stretches. We found moving from pre-connects to this, we became much more efficient at garden style apartments, long setbacks, uh, two and three story homes, places where we had a need for a long stretch. The bundles work really well and they're just uh, made even better with that St. Paul stack it sits upon deployment for this would be the nozzle will hop off the back when the air brake is set. He's going to grab that Wichita bundle, he's going to head to the door, and he's going to drop about eight feet from the door and stretch away, or stretch from, or he's going to drop about 25-30 feet away and stretch to. Meanwhile, our driver, our MPO, our motor pump operator, will grab that furthest left loop, whether it be the two and a half or the inch and three quarter, and he'll pull that off. Uh, he's basically creating working length to get from the rig to the back of the nozzleman. Uh, if you think about a pre-connect that's 200 feet by grabbing that loop and walking about 50 feet from the engine, he will have 200 feet of hose off, whether it be two and a half inch, three quarter. At that point, if it's enough, he'll come back, break it, and then connect to one of those outlets below. On the left and the far right are three inch outlets that can hook into the two and a half. Uh, and then just in the middle there, there's a large diameter and a re bell reducer on another outlet that will hook into the inch and three quarter. Again, a bread and butter stretch is going to be within 200 feet. And we pull past the fires uh, to allow room for our truck companies, which puts the rear of our rig in the right spot for the stretch. Uh, normal bread and butter, 200 feet off. You're going to have that Wichita bundle plus another 100 foot. It's going to get broken from the inch and get broken from that static bed and connected to the bell reducer. If we have to go further, then we start using the St. Paul stacks. We'll start throw those on our shoulders, playing them off, and we can get it as far as 700 feet away from the rig before we run out of hose in any of those static beds. At that point, whenever we get to where we need to go, the MPO is going to break it, connect it in, do a quick uh, calculation in his head on friction loss, and send the appropriate pressure to the uh, hose. Here you have an overhead view of one of our older engines and the old style hose we had before, uh, but made into the Wichita bundles. One of the things we like about this is you notice the two and a half and inch and three quarter load the same way. Now you could make your two and a half 50 foot and your inch three quarter 100. It doesn't really matter. We'll talk about that when we show building the bundles. But the stretch is always the same. That is very nice because if you pull up on a building fire once every couple, three months or longer, that stretch may not be very familiar. But if it's the exact same as an inch and three quarter stretch that maybe you pull once every day in training and on fires every few days, 
then that muscle memory is built up and that stretch is going to be nice and clean and efficient. So we basically try to keep all our hose stretched the same way, whether it be inch three quarter, two and a half. That way where we can keep that standard of one minute from air break to line ready to press in and that helps keep the fire ground clock consistent for our rescue and truck companies that are doing work at the same time as our engine companies are getting stretched. Show the stretches in real time to start off. I have a clock run up here in the upper left hand corner. Air brake is set is when the clock starts. So our goal is air brake to line pressing into the building in one minute. That keeps the fire ground clock uh, lined up. So he's going to stretch too. He come off, he's dropped. The door position went ahead and stretched what the driver would usually stretch and the officer, quote unquote, is heading around doing his 360. Uh, he's, so 17 seconds, he's got a stretch made from air brake, and now he's gonna start his mask up process. He's called for water. Usually our officer will do this in case there's a, you know, on the 360 he sees a better place to enter. But uh, since there are no officers in recruit training, they kind of fill that role. So as the officer's completed his 360, he's gonna start masking up as well. So looks like about 35 seconds from air brake uh, to bleeding the line. So that's pretty good, pretty good uh, time there. Uh, once this uh, officer, the backup guy, gets masked up, which there he goes, they're going to go ahead and press in. So in this case, about 49 seconds or so from air brake to ready to press in. That's stretching too. Now we'll do the same thing here, but we'll show stretching from the other option. And we'll show both these in a minute, uh, kind of slow, to show how to do them. Uh, but once again, air brake is set, clock has started. Uh, little recruits come off, grabs a bundle. Uh, the door position grabs the driver's loop since there's no driver necessarily and he's going to come up he's going to drop this bundle six to eight feet off the door he's going to break his straps he's going to grab the halfway points which are marked with tape and he's going to come straight back and once again the stretch looks identical to the other stretch once it's made uh, officer's done his 360 he's telling him the fire location it's uh, a side bedroom on the ab corner and they start their mask up. You know, so our recruits are, uh, they mask up with gloves on. That's how we make them do it from the very beginning. So it's just second nature to them. They get very efficient by, you know, week seven or eight in the Recruit Academy. Uh, 43 seconds, 44, he's about ready to bleed the line. Okay, 46 seconds, he's bled the line. Both of them are masked up and they're ready to press in. So once again, we met the, the uh, requirement there. We're going to start with building the Wichita bundles. Uh, we're running 100 foot here, mainly because when this is done, it'll be 75 to 85 feet long, which is enough uh, working line for most uh, houses, even some of the larger ones. Uh, now, if you have a lot of small houses in your district, and you want to run just a 50 foot bundle, that works just as well. Uh, if you want to do a full 100 foot and tie their coupling in, you can do that too. Uh, that's kind of the nice thing about this. Uh, we marked the halfway points on this hose. Um, you can have the manufacturers, uh, Key, Matex, all come in here and they'll mark your halfway points for you. Uh, we kind of found that, like this one, gets a little faded and it gets really hard for our crews to see. And so we tend to use tape. Uh, it kind of looks a little trashy, but it's cheap. You can get any color you want to contrast your hose and make sure it's easy to see. And as it gets worn out from charging and training and dragging and going to fires, it's cheap to replace. So we kind of like like that. So we're building this. We want to make these about six foot long. You can use a New York hook, like a six foot hook if you want to, uh, to gauge that. Um, you can bring your halfway points in, but you kind of figure it out pretty quick if you're right or not. So let's go ahead and start building this here. So we're going to start the nozzle side. And he's going to come down about six feet. Um, he's going to make a guess. It's not going to be a big deal. We'll figure it out. Uh, once we make our first one. So we come in here and our first fold is going to be just kind of blind behind the coupling to kind of keep it nice and tight. Yep, nice and tight like that. And then we're going to come in with a second fold there. We really don't care about this end opposite the nozzle. Really what we care about is that. So you see he guessed pretty good. So now he has tape mark there. Our halfway point is right beside the nozzle. And he's going to go back and make another short uh, loop kind of like he had before on his first one. Good. Okay, so the next one come up, we find we run right in the nozzle, the coupling. And so that's 50 foot. We're gonna go ahead and continue on. We're gonna make about a 75 to 85 foot bundle here in this Wichita bundle, which is pretty typical for our crews. It's kind of nice to disconnect these till you're building them. Uh, just let all air get out. We want this to be nice and tight and as small as possible, especially if you plan on putting this in a, a pre-connect tray of some sort. 
Okay, so now again, he folds a little short fold there, and when it comes back, his halfway point should be really close. Yep, there we go. And once again, we don't really care about this end a whole lot. What we really care about is this front side. Okay, and now he's gonna do that, and he's gonna trail this side off. Now, if you're doing a full 100 foot, you'd bring that coupling right back up here to the front, connect it on, and then it'd go to your bed. Uh, but since we're doing about, it really is 85 foot bundle, we won't do that. Now when it's done, you notice everything we need is here on one end. You have your nozzle, your coupling, and then you have your two halfway points. So the benefit of this versus some of the bundles that put the loops here in the back is that when I drop this, it's dark, I'm tired, whatever. Everything I need is right here. I don't have to go looking somewhere else in the bundle for something to help me get the stretch made. Everything I need is in one easy spot. Okay, so we're gonna work on stretching two. This is one of the two options we have. We let the nozzleman pick. He can stretch to or from. Sometimes the structure dictates. Uh, in this case, it's wide open, it's unobstructed. He's got plenty of room. So he's gonna come up. He's already pulled it off the top of the engine. He's drugged it to here. The MPO, our drivers, are stretching the driver's loop and breaking and connecting. He's gonna drop it. He's gonna break the two straps and stretching two, he's gonna grab the nozzle and coupling, facing the building as he walks up and stop. And he's gonna drop down top and start his stretch up. Okay, so if you look at it, uh, his halfway points are back there. The, the line drags back and goes to our engine. Okay, so we made one stretch there. We stretched two. We're gonna show you stretching from now. We'll show you kind of a different way to reload it. Uh, it works just as well. It's just kind of a preference thing. Um, we usually show our recruits both ways, so I figured I'd pass them both beer. Grabbing the halfway points and you're walking them up to the front. Then you're gonna grab the halfway points again and walk them up to the front. This kind of saves you having to measure anything or worry about being off on your measurements. Um, so it's kind of up to you, okay? Once we're to this point, we're just gonna clean it up, make sure all the rules are met, which is the short ones are right there in the crotch of the coupling, the long ones are right there next to the nozzle, and all our visual indicators are right where they should be, okay? Once again, we don't really care much about this back. If you have a long tail back there or something because your hose is coupled weird or whatever, that's fine. It's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, and then basically once you're to that second tape mark, we'll come up, we'll make one more short, and then we're gonna trail it off. And that gives us a little running line to, to make it out of the bed, especially if you have pre-connect, that comes in pretty handy. Okay, now we're ready to throw the straps on. Crews do this less often, but works really well. Usually when we see this is uh, unknown entry points. So a duplex, a uh, complex of apartments where you're not sure where you're gonna end up going, and you don't wanna have to loop back away from the building once you find your entry point. Uh, you will just walk up. So go ahead and start up there. He's gonna come up, he's located his entry point, he's gonna stretch into. Um, he's able to read the building as he does walk up. He's gonna drop his bundle uh, six to eight feet off the door. We don't wanna be so close that uh, he's right up the doorman, trying to force that door. He's gonna grab the two halfway points you see there in his hand. He's gonna kind of shake his hands. He backs up and drops them and then walks forward. And hopefully get the door forced by now and controlled. Now he's gonna call for water and start his mask up. Um, again, if you look at the bundle or the stretch, it looks the same way. Uh, tape marks back and nozzle coupling forward. That's always the deal. Okay, one alternate way to stretch this is uh, short stretches. So in this case, they came up, their plan was to stretch away, so they dropped it near the entry point, but they have a limited amount of space. So we have a porch that we're on, or we're on the landing between floors on a garden apartment, or someplace where we just don't have a full 35 feet or so of room to make this uh, too big use. So we're gonna do a short stretch. What Brain's gonna do is gonna basically walk up here, and you see you have your, your nozzle, your halfway point, your coupling, your halfway point, those are all we'd call the marked areas. He's gonna take all the non-marked areas. So he's gonna take this fold, that fold, that fold, and that fold. All the ones that don't have any kind of markings, and he's gonna walk him back. He's basically gonna decrease the amount of stretch we have by about half. Okay, comes in, halfways, halfways. He's gonna walk him back. Okay, there you go. Clean him up, call for water. So now we've got this nice short stretch here, taking up about 12 feet or so. Uh, the drawback is, is you've doubled the amount of bends you have in the hose. You have a lot higher propensity for kinking. Uh, so it's a trade-off. It's not something we do all the time. It's just an option. Okay, so now we're talking about fixing a failed stretch. Uh, this is the place where the halfway points shine. Now we didn't invent the halfway point tape thing. Uh, that's a Chief Dave McGrail from Denver thing that we picked up. 
about the same time we did this, we moved to the high rise system and we just figured out, man, it works so great on this system as well. So I know some places with the bundles will do ears and those work fine, but you lose like the benefit of fixing a mess up stretch. So here we got just a pile of hose. Uh, maybe your bundle came loose, you're walking up, you stepped in a hole, uh, your nozzleman freaked out and decided to quit and join the, the police department and just left you with this. But we can overcome this, we can fix it, okay? So we know what, we know that Coupling and nozzle have to go to the door, okay? And we know our halfway points have to go away. As long as we make that happen, this is gonna be okay. So go ahead, Hunter. Okay, he's gonna locate the coupling and the nozzle. He's gonna pull it forward. He's gonna locate his two halfway points. He's found one. There's the other. He's gonna do a little shakes as he walks back. Okay, stretch is fixed, right? Now we know we come up here and call for water, we're gonna be okay. That took three or four seconds. So that's the benefit of knowing that our nozzle and our coupling always go forward, halfway points always go back. Okay, we'll talk about uh, moving a line that's already dropped. So in this case, our nozzle came up, he stretched this door, he has a nice clean stretch, but the officer on his 360 uh, realized that this is a duplex and the door is on the other side. We gotta move this line. Now luckily it hadn't been charged yet. Uh, if the nozzle has good discipline, he wouldn't have broke the straps yet. He could just pick up the bundle and move it, but this is what we got. So overcoming this basically is a matter of coming up. Once again, these halfway points being marked help us out. Go ahead, Braden. Um, he's gonna grab him. He's gonna pull him up. He's gonna grab his coupling and his nozzle, and now he's gonna relocate. Okay, so now he's dragging it around. Okay, he's located the correct door now. He's dropped it. He's gonna keep a hold of his halfway points. And there we go. Just like that, walks up, drops a knee, calls for water, starts his mask up. Okay, so now we're gonna do a pre-connects. Now, we don't run pre-connects here uh, in Wichita. We do everything off the static beds in the rear, but I know a lot of places are still using the pre-connects, and this works just as well in a pre-connect configuration as it does off the static. Uh, so this is a standard 200 foot, three wide bed. We'll show that, and then we'll show a two wide bed. So on a three wide bed, we're just going to uh, keep all the rows basically short with no ears. Uh, three wide, flat load. Now once we get to our first coupling here, we're gonna end up making a uh, an ear for the driver's loop, that way the driver can help clear that bed. Or our nozzleman, when he grabs a bundle, can grab that driver, that single loop, and clear the bed that way as well. So go ahead and put your, uh, put a driver's loop there if you want. Yeah, that works, perfect, good. And then go back on the other side, he's gonna put driver's loop as well. That way both sides look the same. This bu bundle can come out either direction, no matter which side of the fire the engine parks on, we just pull from that side using the bundle and the single loop. Halfway points, so we're close. Okay, so here we're the end. Now we're gonna go ahead and just throw this bundle right on top and connect it. Okay, so here is a three wide uh, bundle is sitting on top and connected. Uh, Nozma would come up, he grabbed that bundle. Uh, he can grab that driver's loop, clear the bed if he wants, or just head to the door with this, let the MPO or the driver take care of this loop and stretch to or from uh, like we showed before. Okay, so now we're gonna do this like it's a two wide. Now obviously it's a three wide bundle or a uh, tray, so we're just gonna skip one section of it. When we do two wides with these, uh, we end up having 100 foot stacked flat on top of itself all the way up. Uh, with a loop after the first coupling on each side for our driver to clear the bed, the 50 foot mark. And then the void that's created beside that will be our bundle, and that's gonna be our two wide stack. If you want, hey Brendan, go ahead and make your uh, loop there and see if that, may, yeah, that moves on coupling, good. Now make your loop on. Yep. Yep, that put the coupling in a little better spot anyway. Or it wasn't hanging out the end. 
Don't like the couplings to hang out at the end. Not that it's a huge deal, but the weight of them can pull your bundle out going down the road. It can also beat up the side of your rigs or get hung up in your net uh, if you're running uh, your nets on your cross lays. Okay, we're gonna keep loading it until we get to the end of the second 50 and then we'll stand the bundle up right beside it. Okay, so here we have the two wides set up. Uh, nozzles down, should be enough room above that you can pull from either side again. Uh, your driver's loop is right there to clear the bed. That's the halfway point on that 100 foot. And that's pretty well two wide pre-connect. Um, with a single pre-connect, single stack, you would just stack it all on top of itself with the bundle resting on top. As we're sitting here filming today, just happened to see in the background, looks like Firehouse 2 is getting a job right now. Pretty good header showing. I know this video is long, but I know how hard it is to get your department to change the way they do business. The old saying is there's a million ways to skin the cat, and this is just one way. But if you run a three or four man engine like we do, it's probably one of the more efficient ways we've found and has lots of benefits when it comes to fixing a bad stretch. And make sure to reach out to us. We have dozens and dozens of these videos, both from working fires and from training. We also have photos and write-ups and instructions on how to build the bundles as well as how to stretch them.